the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome. Well, thank you. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Everyone is talking these days about blood moons. Why? We know from Joel that before the awesome, great day of the Lord, the day of judgment, there's going to be a moon that will be all blood. But what most people don't know is that every time, historically, when there is what is known as a tetrod, a tetrod is four blood moons in a row. Every time there has been a tetrod on biblical feasts, not on the feast that most Christians celebrate, but I mean on the biblical feast, something significant has happened to change the whole world. There is a tetrod that will occur this year and next year on a biblical feast, and there won't be another one for another 400 years. What significant thing is going to happen between this year and next year? I believe I have the guest that will be able to tell us that. So, I'm watching television. I'm watching the major news shows, and all of a sudden, internationally known evangelists are on these secular news shows talking about the blood moons. So I do a little research, and I find out that everyone that I'm aware of found out their basic information from Mark Biltz. Tell me a bit about your background, that, that you know these things. Well, sure, I'd love to, Sid. Uh, to me, this is so exciting. I feel like just a, a little kid. And when I was a little kid, I loved astronomy. And I'd be laying down out on the grass, and I'd be looking up at the heavens, and like Psalms 19, where it says, the heavens declare the glory of God. And I would just be looking up, and i just love it. And I had a telescope, and I'd always be trying to find the moons around Jupiter and the ring around Saturn. And then as I got older and I became a believer and filled with the Holy Spirit, and I just love God, and all of a sudden I found out about the feasts of the Lord. And I realized they weren't the Jewish feasts, but they were the Lord's feasts. And I'm going to NASA's website because I love math. I love science. And I had seen this beautiful total lunar eclipse over the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And I got to thinking about the Bible verses, you know, with the, the moon turning to blood and the sun to sackcloth. And so what did I do? I, I said, well, let's see if there's any interesting eclipses coming up. And so I looked and I saw there, there were these four total lunar eclipses in a row. And I thought, well, how often does that happen? And so I was going to NASA's website, and I saw it didn't happen at all in the 1800s, didn't happen in the 1700s, didn't happen in the 1600s. So and it's pretty rare. It's very, as a matter of fact, after my research, I found it has only happened eight times in the last 2,000 years that's that rare. these have fallen on the biblical feast days. But that's what was so amazing. I, I'm in my prayer closet. It's about four in the morning. I was getting up, uh, you know, early uh, for a long time. And I'm praying, and all of a sudden, it's like this voice comes and says, Mark, put these on the biblical holidays. Because when I was on NASA's website, it had like April and October, April and September, and it was like a download. And so I get all excited, and I run out to my computer, and I get on the uh, computer, and I see they fell on Passover and Tabernacles, Passover and Tabernacles. So now I'm ready to jump out of my skin. I can't sure. believe this. Oh my gosh, you know. And so I go back and I look, uh, and then I see when else they've happened in history, and it just blew me away. Well, the thing that is so amazing to me, tell me about the last uh, set of tetrods that's four of these blood moons yeah. in a row. Uh, one 
was just happened to be in 1948. Another one just happened to be in 1967. Uh, what significant things happened in 1948 <laughs> and 19? I, I think all of you know. I, do, do many of you know what, what happened in 48 and 67? But just in case. Well, sure. Uh, well, the thing that amazed me concerning the math is, you know, according to NASA, over 5,000 years, you only average one total lunar eclipse every year and a half. And here we have four within a year and a half, and they're falling on the feast days. Mm. And the last time it happened was when Israel recaptured Jerusalem in 1960. 67 and 1968. And when I saw that, it was like, oh, good grief, this is, this is supernatural. And so I go running back and I look at the next date, and it was right after Israel became a nation in 1948. It happened in 1949 and 50. And so now my mind's reeling, so I have to go back and I got to do some more research. And I'm going back and I find out it happened during the Inquisition, 1492 when Columbus sails the ocean blue. Most now, why was that? Now, that was pretty bad for us Jewish people because we Jews were, were literally left, uh, if we didn't leave, we'd be murdered. So it wasn't too good for us Jewish people, but it had an effect on the world. What was well, that? Well, sure it did, because they expelled all the Jews on the 9th of Av, and also in Portugal in 1493, 1494, what happens King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella are taking all the Jewish wealth, but that is what helped finance the finding of the new world and all the Jews coming over to America. So in your opinion, if the Jews hadn't been expelled and Christopher Columbus, who is Jewish, and you, you told me also there were a number of his crew that were Jewish, why? Because they had to leave Spain. They might not have founded America. That's right, that's right. That's exactly right. And you know what? As I went back further, at the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. That's going way back. Way back. <laughs> solar lunar eclipses all over the biblical holidays. And then during the time of Messiah's death, 32, 33 AD, solar lunar eclipses all over the biblical holidays. And so I'm thinking, God is true. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. We're out of time right now. But when we come back, so what does this mean to us now? What effect, what significant thing is going to happen because we know that these four blood moons are going to occur this year and next year. We know that. We know they're going to be on the biblical feast, but we don't know what effect it'll have on us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Judgment Day, so to speak. Prophet Joel talks about that. But why connect them with the feasts, the biblical feasts. Why are the biblical feasts important to us? Mark? Well, sure, Sid. I see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, is a verse I'd read a hundred times, but all of a sudden it hit me like a ton of bricks. All of a sudden it had a whole new level of meaning. I always thought God created the sun and the moon for light or heat. But when I read Genesis 1:14, it said He created the sun and the moon for signs. That's the number one reason. It was for signs or signals. And then the very next word is mistranslated in English. What is it? And then it says for seasons and days and years. Well, when I read seasons, I think of winter, spring, sure. summer, or fall. But did you know that same Hebrew word they translated as seasons in Genesis and Leviticus, they translate that same word as feasts. So you're saying that the sun and the moon it was created for food? For <laughs> for signs. In the winter. <laughs> Th this is what's coming to me. Um, if there are, uh, you know, in baseball, there's, uh, you notice the catcher does certain hand signals to, to a fastball or a curve or something like that. Now, if the pitcher doesn't know what those hand signals are, he won't have a clue what's going to happen. I mean, the catcher's liable to get right hit in the face. Exactly. But if he knows, he's prepared. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Because that same word that's translated as either fall or food literally means a divine appointment. That's what the Hebrew word moed means. And how many of you believe in divine appointments? I mean, obviously. So, and, and how many of you want to know the sign for a divine appointment? I sure do. Well, the thing to me is, also, I realize they're scheduled. 
there's some divine appointments that are scheduled, like Passover, like the Feast of Tabernacles. And each one of these feasts in Hebrew is called a mikra. Now, we translate as that, that as convocation, but the Hebrew word implies a dress rehearsal. So every time on Passover, the Jews went through the dress rehearsal of killing the Passover lamb on Passover, because that is when the event was going to happen. So he died on Passover. He was buried on unleavened bread. He rose on the Feast of First Fruits. And the Spirit was poured out on the Feast of Pentecost, or Shavuot. But most Christians don't know the Jews have been keeping Pentecost for every year for 1,500 years. So what you're saying is not only are these biblical feasts shadows of every major event in the first coming of the Messiah, but you go f even further. You're saying to the exact day, and in some cases, they're to the exact hour. Explain. Exactly. The, it was at the third hour of the day they bound the Lord to the cross, it says. Well, that's nine in the morning, the time of the morning sacrifice. So at the very moment, the high priest is binding the Passover lamb to the altar. They're binding the lamb of God to the cross and they're singing the Psalms. They would always sing Psalms 113 through Psalms 118. Did you know that God had David write the funeral song for his son a thousand years before? Is I, God brilliant or what? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> At the, yeah. at the very moment, at the very moment, they're biting the Passover to the lamb to the altar. They're biting Yeshua to the cross. Josephus records two and a half million Jews are in Jerusalem, and there's this choir that is singing. And the words they're singing is, bind the sacrifice with cords, even to the horns of the altar. This is what they're singing at the very moment. This is what he's hearing while they're binding him to the cross. And then at noon, when he's lifted up, and he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw a men unto me. Guess what they're singing? Psalms 118, and what are the words? The right hand of the Lord is lifted up. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. This is, so not only did he fulfill the feast to the day, but to the very single hour. And so the thing is this, if we're not on the right calendar, see our calendar is based on the sun. Right. The Islamic calendar is based on the moon. But God says, let them, both the sun and the moon, determine the but, but, days but, but, of but, my daytime. But, but, but wait a second, the church, celebrates Resurrection Sunday. So, uh, you know, so isn't that the same? Well, it's on the wrong calendar. Do wrong you calendar. know? Well, do but you wait, know? wait, wait, wait. The church okay. celebrates Pentecost. Right. Is that right? On the wrong calendar. Well, no wonder we're... No, I won't say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give, you, I'll give you a perfect example. Okay. <laughs> now, here's the thing. The, th the feast, God's appointed time. Right, this audience is going to get me in trouble. <laughs> but God is a God of order. And because of that, he has to die before he gets buried. He's got to be buried before he can raise from the dead. And he's got to raise from the dead before the Holy Spirit can be poured out on Pentecost. Do you know, on the secular calendar we use, because we're on the wrong calendar, two years from now, Easter is a month before Passover. Now, how do you celebrate not even the resurrection the before he even dies? I, I, I'll tell you what. It, I have to ask you this. If the first feasts are purpose, perfect shadows to the, the day, the hour, the events in the death and resurrection of Jesus, what about the last few feasts? What are they shadows of? Well, do you believe the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Of course. I mean, do you really believe that? I really believe that. Well, if you really believe it, if he fulfilled the spring feast to the day of his first coming, he'll fulfill the fall feast to the day of his second coming. Well, I'm going to ask you, Sadan, this is the most important question. We have this tetrod and the last blood moon of the four that are coming up, but you say there are certain things about this last tetrod that has never happened in history. Are you sure? Yes. Well, I'll tell you what. When we come back, I want to hear what's about ready to happen. That wasn't a very convincing yet. <laughs> Just say yes! Yes! <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, you know, as we were discussing, if everything is being fulfilled, 
to the day, to the hour, the first coming of the Messiah through God's biblical feasts, or as Mark explained, his appointments, then the last feast will be his return to the day and the hour. But is there anywhere in the Bible that gives us a clue uh, that the devil's going to tamper with the calendar so that we'll miss the signs? You bet there is. It's in the book of Daniel. And think about this. If you were in business and your competitor, you you had an appointment, if he could get a hold of your day timer and change it, he would love to have you miss the appointment. Of course. Well, God doesn't want us to miss the appointments. And he always warns before he brings uh, judgment. And guess what? In Daniel, it says one of the things the Antichrist tries to do is change the times and the seasons. I remember that. Do you remember that? I do. That's referring to the the feast days. That's referring to God's appointed times when he's going to intersect human history. So significant. So speaking of intersecting human history, we have this tetrod, the four blood moons, and the last one, which will happen next year, will be the most unusual that it ever has occurred in history. In fact, we won't even we don't even have any more of these uh, tetrods scheduled that occur on feast days for over 400 years after that. Why is it so unusual, Mark? Well, have you ever heard of a super moon? Uh, I actually heard of it because I interviewed you on radio. Before (laughs) that, I didn't know Diddley. (laughs) Well, here's what a super moon is. Here's the Earth, and here's the moon. And the moon's orbit around the Earth is elliptical. It's far away, and it gets close, and it's far away. Every month, it does a complete orbit. Mm -hmm. When the moon is at its closest point to Earth, it's called its perigee, all right? Well, if the moon is a new moon at perigee, at its closest point, you don't even see it. But if the moon is a full moon at its closest point to Earth, according to NASA, it looks 14% larger. It's this big super moon because it's so close. Well, guess what? Next year, on September 28th, we not only have a full moon, we have a super moon that is at its closest point to Earth, not just for the month, but for the entire year. And it's a super blood moon that is going to be seen in Jerusalem on the Feast of Tabernacles and in a Shemitah year. Now, what's a Shemitah year? Now, the Shemitah year is every seventh year. Jubilee. It was every seventh year, the land had to rest and it couldn't be tilled. But the amazing thing is this. Every man, see, God commanded all the men to be in Jerusalem three times a year. Right. He didn't command the women because the men have to be told what to do. The women don't. Okay. (laughs) But every three times a year, all the men had to be in Jerusalem. But in the Shemitah year, in the seventh year, specifically on the Feast of Tabernacles, it says in Deuteronomy, every man, woman, child, and even the stranger has to be there to hear the King of Israel read from the scriptures. Okay, now this begs the question, why is God giving us so many sign after sign after sign for next year? What, use your sanctified intellect, having studied astronomy, <laughs> having studied the Bible, having studied the biblical feast. You're, you're an expert in these three arenas. What is going to happen? Well, here's one thing that I think. In the book of Joel, you mentioned where it talks about the sun turning to sackcloth and the moon to blood. It's in the same context that God says he's going to judge all the nations who are trying to divide the land of Israel. And that's what's going on right now. And America is leading the push to divide the land of Israel. And I think these are the heavenly billboard warning signs by God to Israel not to divide their land. It's also that America should not partake. But here's the other thing. We see a war in 1948, a biblically prophetic war. We see a biblically prophetic war in 67. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I think there's a good chance we could see a biblically prophetic war in Israel because there are several that haven't taken place yet. But guess what else? That seventh year is an economic reset year. That is when all the debts were to be forgiven and the people released. But in Nebuchadnezzar's day, they had set the people free, and then they changed their mind and put them all back into bondage. And God said, because of that, this seventh year is going to be a year of judgment. And the seventh year has been a year of judgment. And do you know, in 1994, do you remember the Shoemaker-Levy Comet, when it got pummeled 21 times 
okay? That was a Shemitah year. And guess what weekend it happened on? The 9th of Av, which is the time when the temple was destroyed twice. And so I thought back in 90, 1994 that that meant with 21 fragments that the 7 times 3 is 21, the next three Shemitah years are going to be times of judgment. And 2001 was a Shemitah year or the seventh year, and that's when the Dow fell its biggest drop ever to that time, and it fell on Rosh Hashanah the first day of the seventh month. It fell 7%. Tell me the next drop. The next one is 2008 when the big stock market crash happened. Guess what? That was the Shemitah year. It happened on the... First day of the seventh month, the Dow fell 777 points. It was no, a, you're making that. No. It, it was it did. I saw it. It, it really the, did. Yeah. Now, now, listen, how many more signs do you need? This is your moment to make Jesus your Messiah and Lord. Believe that Jesus died, just like Mark explained, and rose from the dead on the Jewish feast, and believe that his blood washed away your sins. You are clean. Make Jesus your Lord and live inside of you now.